We're on the Great Western Highway, about 30 kilometres northwest of Lithgow, and we're on our way to the small country town of Glen Davis, which was used as the filming location for the 1980 cult Ozploitation film, The Chain Reaction. The town of Glen Davis is set within the Caper Tea Valley. It was established in 1939 due to a revival of the oil shale industry and the need for petroleum during wartime. The shale works first produced oil in 1940 and by 1947 the town had an increasing population of about 1,600 people. After the Second World War, however, the profitability of the industry had become questionable and the government made the decision to close the works in 1952. Glen Davis now survives as a kind of semi-ghost town with the haunting relics of the shale works standing as an iconic reminder of the town's history. The Chain Reaction is best described as an eco-action thriller made around the same time as a number of similar consequences of nuclear energy themed films like The China Syndrome and Silkwood. The film stars Steve Bisley and Anna Maria Winchester as working class couple Larry and Carmel Stilson, Ross Thompson as engineer Heinrich, Hugh Keys Burns as an environmental activist known as Eagle, and Ralph Cotterell as bad guy Grey. So after a major leak at a radioactive waste disposal depot, a nuclear engineer exposed to a lethal dose of radiation and suffering amnesia stumbles upon a couple enjoying a dirty weekend in an idyllic cabin in Paradise Valley. After being harassed and pursued by corporate thugs, they soon realise they must expose a cover-up and warn the public of the danger of contaminated groundwater. Glen Davis was an old shale oil mining town and there's a lot of ruins um, located over in that direction which we'll be checking out this afternoon. Steve Bisley as uh, Larry Stilson comes back into town to get some help for Heinrich, the uh, nuclear engineer who stumbled into their cabin. And you can clearly see, make out in the film, that, that that building over there was used as the police station. And there's a number of shops there where you can see that. And if we swing around in this direction here, this building here served as the pub and general store. And this is also where we first meet the character of Eagle, played by Hugh Keys Byrne, who's working on a uh, pinball machine undercover as a pinball machine repairman as he's tracked Heinrich down to uh, the town. takes us out to the Kurunguba campground, about two and a half k's out of town, which was the location of the cabin where Larry and Carmel are enjoying their sexy weekend. It's also where the weak and delirious Heinrich stumbles in, implicating the couple in the deadly cover-up. Yeah, there's a lookout up there, somewhere we can walk up to. See if we can actually get some sort of tree that we can see in the film to get a fix on where the actual cabin was. But it's um, proving to be really difficult. That uh, 
there's a few shots in the film of that, that escarpment up there. Get the picture, because it looked like it went in a rise. Yeah, it did, eh? I like, wonder if that tree is the tree that you can see. You have a look, because look, I mean, obviously they're all replanting, but get the, get the picture back. It's all right, please. You're going to be all right. I'm a nurse. We're trying to help you. I mean, no harm. Fine, fine. It's a minor laceration, that's all. Nothing to worry about. What's the problem, mate? No, Sue. I beg you. I mean, no harm. Put that thing inside, will you, Larry? You do, go out find me a twice a written word. No, I don't. Will you please turn it off, Larry? Look, don't worry. It's not even loaded. There's ammo around. Don't you worry, mate. Come on, Larry. Wake up to yourself. Thanks for the backup, darling. So we think we pretty much uh, nailed the spot where the cabin was, which was right here. Because we've got that slight rise in the background uh, to the tree line. And we come around this way and the river's just down there. This looks like a lot of erosion and widening of this river's taken place over the course of time. Just having a look around to see if there's anything remaining of the cabin. Yeah, this seems to be a divot in the ground here. Actually, you can see the impression there. If the cabin was here, it was probably standing right there. and your boss gets a lot, unless you're hungry for seniority. Fire away, Oates. We're just going to climb up these stairs over here and we're going to get to the top of Glen Davis Lookout, which looks out all over the original shower works. Civilization here. Yeah. It used to be a mining town. Just something went wrong. Right now we're heading back into Glen Davis where we're going to take a look through the now ghostly remains of the shoal works. The location itself probably only appears on screen for a total of five minutes or so but nevertheless becomes a distinctive feature of the film.
Carmel takes Heinrich on top of the hill there to that structure and you can clearly see in the film that across the front of it there it says Paradise Valley Bottle Works. You can even make out the B and the O that's still there from the, the, the spray paint that they put up there for the film and also that uh, remaining um, iron panel that's there you can make out the rust on the side of it the rest is falling away in the final act of the film Larry and Carmel break out from the cabin where they're being held and they manage to rescue the now doomed Heinrich bundling him into the back of Larry's ute and make their escape this sets off the ripping climactic car chase as Larry speeds through the ruins of the shawl works with Gray in pursuit. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at Glenn Davis and the locations for one of our favourite Aussie films, The Chain Reaction. If you haven't seen the film, hopefully this video will inspire you to check it out. It's got some great Mad Max style car chases, cracking performances from the cast and a great electro synthesizer score from composer Andrew Thomas Wilson. It's a very underrated Aussie classic. <laughs>